Hey guys, Luke here. I'm here to preview the 2015 NRL season. We're up to round two. This is Super Sad Day. Let's get into previewing the games. Uh, and the actual games we're going to be previewing is going to be the Panthers and the Titans. And they're the first one. The second is Sea Eagles vs. Storm. And the third one is Cowboys vs. The Knights. Now we're going to start off doing the Panthers and Titans. Let's go into the team lineups. Panthers first. We've got Moylan, George Jennings, Vara Idris, Watini, Zlesniak, or Zlesniak. I can't remember the the exact pronunciation, but they, they said that he doesn't, it's not actually pronounced a Lesniak, so uh, we're going to change that eventually. Uh, Jamie Soward, Peter Wallace, McKendry, Seguiaro, Kite, Manu, Brown, Taylor, and the bench is Peachy, Lattimore, Campbell, Gallard, Cartwright, and Yo, and I expect Yo to drop off. Then we move on to the Titans lineup, which is Zillman, Gordon, Roberts, Hoffman, Mead, Caesar, Mortimer, Douglas, Mosley, Pettiborn, James, Burr, and Miles. And the bench is Parsi, Ioni, Robinson, Ashrama, and Simpkins. With, I expect Simpkins to drop off the bench. Now, talking about this game, I've seen a lot of Titans supporters. Uh, they seem very optimistic towards this game, or at least the few that I've seen. I don't really share that same optimism. I'm expecting Panthers to win 13+, and here's why. I just think Panthers way too strong for, um, for the Titans. Now, I expected a Bulldogs win last week. It obviously didn't happen. Panthers just came out too much power. Um, sorry, too much. In, they were just really up for it, by the looks of things. Um, a lot of intensity, and they kept it up for long enough. Um, they might not have did it for the whole game, dropped off at the end, but they did it long enough, and they got the win, which is the main thing. Seguiari is the key, him getting out of dummy half. Um, you know, if they get those opportunities, I think they should definitely um, take advantage of it. I'm not sure what the weather is going to be like in Bathurst. The field might play... A part because I believe it is in Bathurst. It says at Carrington Park, but it doesn't say location. But I'm pretty sure it's Bathurst. Um, kicking might be a bit of a problem if you know the surface isn't very good. Maybe there's some injuries. I'm not real sure, but so is that something we can take into account? I think Panthers just overall last week. Yeah, they just they had a lots of intensity, lots of offloads flowing. I don't know if the offloads were necessarily required a lot of the time, but they definitely put a lot of doubt in the Bulldogs' mind. So um, yeah, there's, there's that. Um, Sour, like the halves played pretty good, Moylan played pretty good, um, the backs were very good. Um, yeah, we can say it was a great performance from them for about 70 minutes. They did drop off at the end though, they don't want to do that again, they don't want to let any team have a little bit of a sniff. Uh, although Titans, I don't believe they will get a sniff at all. Um, and here's why, Titans, uh, I see a lot of fans, I was saying this earlier, pretty optimistic based off the fact that they took the Tigers right to the limit. Now, let me be totally honest with you, I think Titans and Tigers are going to be, you know, right at the bottom fighting it out for the wooden spoon. So, the fact that they lost to them doesn't really do much for me. Um, I mean, for them, maybe confidence-wise, being like, we could compete, it might be good, but I just don't see it. I think the halves didn't really step up when it was counted, uh, particularly Caesar, I thought he was a little bit uh, average at the end, and I'm usually a fan of Caesar. I just thought he was going to kick a field goal, didn't happen. Um, big guys like Nate Miles and stuff were dropping the ball at the silly times. Um, obviously, Zillman got coat hanging, and I'm being pretty harsh on Zillman, but um, I think he had an okay game. I do think Josh Hoffman should be the fullback, but you know, it is what it is. I think they don't use James Roberts enough for sure. Like, they don't use their backs, they've got some pretty speedy backs, and they just don't get the ball enough. Um, and then they got a whole bunch of like props playing second row. And it just doesn't it just doesn't work in my opinion. I've just noticed that Lachlan Burr is actually um, yeah Lachlan. I don't even know if I went through the Titans lineup. So oh yeah, I did actually. Don't worry about that. I had a little bit of a mind blank. Uh, Lachlan Burr. Um, I saw he's in the starting lineup, and I think that's a good move. He seemed pretty strong last week, and it's actually good that they've got an actual second rower playing in the second row rather than having. Um, lots of props in there. I just don't think it works when you've got props there. I know Ryan James played pretty well last week, but they're just doing the same thing forwards do, just trying to barge over. Um, they don't run, he didn't run great lines or anything, and they consistently kept going to him. He's dropping the ball. Like I know he scored a try, but he had about 50,000 attempts, so he had to score sometime. Um, plus, like, Tigers defense is not the greatest by any means. I mean, Luke Brooks was absolutely awful last week. And, you know, when one of your players plays that bad and your team still wins, there's something, again, like, has something said about the team that they're versing. And unfortunately for Titans, that was them. And I just, I just was not impressed at all last week, even though I did end up taking the Titans. I originally said Tigers, but last second changed to the Titans last week. So, you let me down. But I'm going to say Panthers 13+. plus. I could even say 20+, plus right now, in my opinion. Uh, that's how confident I am of a Panthers win. Moving on to the Seagulls and the Storm, which generally in previous years would have been seen as a big blockbusting clash, but 
right now, like it, it really it really isn't. It's just another game. A lot of the players who were in those feuds are all gone, um, particularly from Melbourne's. Uh, sorry, from Manly's side. But yeah, just a lot of controversy lately uh, with the Seagulls, particularly Daly Cherry Evans. Um, Storm relatively quiet lately. Um, sort of just going about their business. Although, like, both these sides, I don't really rate either one of them anymore. But I suppose we should go through team lineups first before I get to my opinions. Um, start off with Seagulls. We've got Brett Stewart, Chase Blair, Lion, Matai is back in the side, Hiku uh, in the wing. We've got Little John coming in for Foran, Cherry Evans, Mason, Ballin, Lawrence, Mateo, Simons, and Louis. The bench is Senna, Lafayette, Leary, Burgess. So that's Luke Burgess, that is. Sayo and Horo. Moving on to the Storm, uh, we've got Billy Slater, Tonoma Pia, Chambers, Mann, Corabetti, Green, Cronk, Bromwich, Smith, McLean, Proctor, Harris, Finucane, and the bench is Hinchcliffe, Glasby, Weston, and Kafusi, and I believe that's an unchanged lineup, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which I suppose is good for the Storm account, because I know they weren't the best against Dragons, and I thought it was a pretty shitty game against the Dragons, and Dragons aren't a top side by any means, but um, I think it's just good that they are not... Like, swapping and changing the side, although Felice Kafusi is expected to drop out. I don't know who will come in, but I'd say he will drop out due to suspension. Um, that being said, though, the main players are all the same. Finucane in, in the lot position is pretty good. Um, Blake Green, was, he was all right. Um, did enough, I suppose. Uh, that, that, that's what the Storm do. They're doing enough at this stage. I know it's only been round one, but um, I have a feeling they're going to be a side that they're not going to blow teams off the park this year. They're just going to do enough to, to get the victories. Seagulls, on the other hand, very, very disappointing last week. They got absolutely destroyed by the Eels. And I don't particularly think the Eels are going to be one of the top sides this year. I just think Manly were just really, really bad. Um, obviously, Gutherson with the injury, he's out. Mad Eye was always going to be the first choice anyway, but he's back in. So I think that strengthens things a little bit out on the wings. But I don't think the Mad Eye Blair side was a weakness. I thought Jamie Lyon, Hiku, they were awful in defence last week. Well, I suppose they're on both edges were pretty bad, but just Lyon in particular got stood up so many times by Takarangi, which is not something you come to expect with Jamie Lyon. Um, I, thought, I suppose it doesn't help with Cherry Evans isn't the greatest defender either inside of him. Um, but yeah, I just think Manly's, Manly's fort pack, they're just, they're just not big enough, they're not mobile enough, they're just not skillful enough, they just don't really have anything going for them. At least with, like, with, with Storm's one, like, you look at their side and they've got a good mix of big, big strong lines, and they've also got the skillful lads like Proctor, and uh, Bromwich is fairly skillful, you look at, uh, go back up, look at the Panthers side, they're also big and um, skillful, at least with the Titans, they've got big powerhouse forwards, the Seagulls, they're just a bunch of, like, fringe first graders, really, Let, let's be telling you, apart from Matt Ballon, but he, he's the hook, I'm not counting him, uh, I think Blake Leary on the bench, a lot talked up about him, he look, didn't look very impressive to me, Luke Burgess, another one, it didn't look that impressive. Uh, Justin Horro, I really don't understand why he's not being um, picked. At least like, with the Eels, they had the most possession, and then it just looked like the Force just didn't have the didn't have the stamina to s sort of outlast them, like Mateo and Simons and that sort of stuff. Like I, I don't understand not playing Justin Horro. He's played for New Zealand. Uh, he plays eighty minutes. Now, if anything, he's at least gonna. He's going to give you the effort there for the whole 80 minutes. Whereas people like Mateo, they don't really do much in general. Like, he doesn't get in, do the hard work. Um, he won't run it out from his own end. He'll get the ball when they're in a decent, like, field position. And then he'll go through and do a shitty offload and you'll lose the ball. Whereas Justin Horro, he'll, you know, he'll run some good lines and, you know, get in, do some tackling, um, run it out from his own end. I, I just think he's much more valuable than some of these other forwards that are on the bench. Liggy Sayo or Liggy say or whatever, I don't know how to pronunciation of it, but um, I remember seeing good things written about him back uh, in New South Wales Cup days, I suppose he hasn't really progressed from there, but um, you know, it's an opportunity for him, maybe that's just what some of these forwards need, these opportunities, because um, you say, like, all of these seagulls, like, not all of them can be total shit, like, there's got to be some some decent players there somewhere, whether it's in reserve grade, or, so, like, I like Sandy Lafayette, um, I think he's a good player. I just think that, like, they really are missing some grunt in the forwards, uh, in, in the prop positions, to be honest with you. Uh, Willie Mason, he does a lot of talking, um, says a lot of stuff, but he doesn't really produce that much, uh, is what I found. Except for against the Bulldogs, of course. Um, anyway, that's another story. Uh, Brett Lawrence, I think the initial sort of thing for him was like, oh man, he's a great player, 
But I think what was that, what actually happened was that we were expecting nothing from Brent Lawrence. So when he actually played like a first grader, we're kind of like, oh shit, he's kind of good. He's kind of a good first grader. So because we had such low expectations, you know, we thought he was a great player. But now the expectations are there. He doesn't hit them all the time. I think he just got a bit lucky, had a good form, a uh, good spell of form, um, and I, he just hasn't impressed me for like a good year and a half or so. Um, so if I had to predict a winner, I'm going to say the Storm. I'm going to say one to twelve because I don't think Storm have a whole bunch of points in them. But at the same time, I think they're a better side than Seagulls. So yeah, one to twelve for the Storm. Moving on to the last game of the evening, it's the Cowboys taking on the Knights. Going to the ten lineups. Uh, Michael Morgan for the Cowboys, O'Neill, Wright, Linnett, Winstein, Louis Thurston, Scott, Kosh, Jason, Hennett, Kubert, Lowe, Tamalalo. The bench is Granfield, Tenshinawa, Bolton, Tamu, and Coote. Moving on to the Knights, we've got Gidley, McManus, Gagai, Leilua, Hiwate, Mullen, Roberts, Snowden, Clydesdale, Sims, Scott, Rocco, Smith, and the bench is Randall, Houston, Farlongo, Stockwell, and Sione Matatia. Now, my predictions for this game, I'm going to say an, a Cowboys win. Although Knights did end up winning last week, and the Cowboys end up getting thrashed. I just think this game it will set things straight. I mean, Cowboys were so, so poor. I don't expect them to continue that run of being very poor. Now, I know last week they played at home, and usually they're quite good at home, but I just can't see them putting in two weeks in a row of just being total shit in front of their home fans. I mean, maybe if it was away from home, I'd doubt them a little bit more, but yeah, just because they're at home. Uh, I'm going to tip the Cowboys. Plus, I just think they'll have too much class in the end. Um, Thurston doesn't have too many bad games, but last week was probably one of them in terms of actually like involvement, that sort of stuff, and doing lots of things. Usually, he can carry his side, but I suppose Roosters were just so ruthless, so good that it just didn't happen. Also, Justin O'Neill was so crap last week. It was ridiculous. Lock and Coot, 18th man. I'm not sure what's going to happen with him. Maybe he'll even slot in on the wing. Wouldn't surprise me. He's pretty good under the high ball. Um, that was always his thing at Panthers. He, you know, they'd just pop up a bomb and he'd get under it and score. So maybe him jumping in on the wing for O'Neill, it might just show up things, especially up against like McManus. If he's up against Iwate, it's you know, it's no contest. He's going to catch it nine times out of ten. But um, yeah, O'Neill was just dropping them for the sake of dropping them. There wasn't even any pressure on him or anything. So it was, it was a bit of a strange one. But yeah, overall, Cowboys were just shit. I, it's not really too much else to say. No one was really good. Um, no one really looked like they were trying that hard and all that sort of stuff. Knights, on the other hand, I thought they were relatively good. The kind of th how I thought they would be, just a good solid side. Dan Gagai, obviously, like, very impressive. Um, Kurt Gilly didn't play. Probably a good thing, in my opinion. Uh, I think they are going to lose a lot, Kurt Gilly being a fullback. But, I mean, I could be uh, could be shocked, maybe. Maybe will come out and play incredible. But I feel Matadia probably offers a bit more, just more enthusiasm, just a better fullback, better player in general at this stage of Ghibli's career. Um, yeah, the four pack, it should be a pretty good battle. The halves, you know, pretty good battle. Backs, it's, it's going to be a pretty good battle all around, although I do think Cowboys are stronger in all areas. It's just a matter of, you know, Knights, um, actually, sorry, the back line. I think Knights have got a better back line, barring the fullback. But um, I just think Cowboys should have too much class. Just, have too much in them. I think the Knights got a bit lucky last week that Warriors, uh, they lost Sam Tompkins, and their lower head did quite well. Um, but, like, they come up against people like Chad Townsend, who just shouldn't be in the side, and Warriors aren't great travellers, and once again, they've had a, another shitty start to the season, which is to nobody's surprise, because it always seems to happen, and I think Knights got quite lucky that they uh, got them at home and in the first round, so, uh, I mean, I, I know you, you play, you can only play what's in front of you, but you know, that's, it's just my personal opinion. And I think Cowboys end up winning 13 plus. They'll right the wrongs from last week as much as they can anyways. Um, but yeah, that's all three predictions done, all three previews. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you disagree with me or whatever, just leave in the comments. Don't get too aggressive or anything. Don't get too upset if I'm going against your side. It's nothing personal. Just an opinion. It's not a fact. Um, but yeah, make sure you leave a like. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to follow me on Twitter at MrLukeOnYT. Uh, if that's my... Um, handle, my Twitter handle. Um, also, if you want to discuss any predictions or anything like that, go ahead. Um, but if you are going to leave some, or like some really stupid ones, I am going to call you out on that, probably. Um, but yeah, also like my Facebook page. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. And I'll see you next week. Oh, sorry for the next video. Bye, guys.